Welcome to the next part of this Magnum mini course. So today we are going to be creating this animation. It's going to be quite simple, so let's get started straight away. The first thing we need to do is make a gift wrapper for going around this model. So what I'm going to do is simply go to image, reference, and select a reference image, which you can get on Patreon for free. There it is, press Alt R, R, X. I will select this, Shift S, cursor to select it, Shift A, mesh cube. Let's select the cube and bring it somewhere over here. Now I'm going to scale it on the Z axis, click on seven, and I will make a line right in the middle, click on three, Alt C, select all of this, delete the faces, go to the modifiers, add a mirror modifier, and now we can work on both sides at the same time. Now first I'm going to select this, S and Y, then I will click on three, select this edge, E, and let's bring it inwards, S and Y, Make sure to use the Y instead of only S, otherwise it will scale proportionally and it will look weird. So E and S, S and Y, let's do it again over here. S and Y, S and Y and E. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier, control three. And now it looks like this. Now, I think that this area right here is a little bit higher. So I'm going to select both of these like this, S and Z and make sure that it actually fits in there. Then I'm going to select this entire area and that area, S and Z, and let's scale it down to make it a bit more flat and also select this part, S and Z. Let's make it a bit more flat. And then we have the wrapper almost done. Uh, so there's two ways to go about this part and I will simply add a lot of geometry in order to get it done. Uh, I think that's the easiest way for now. So I will add all of these loop cuts. Then I will select all of these faces right here by holding control. Go to select, check or deselect, and now we have a couple of those, press E, and I want to scale these on the individual origins. So I'm going over here, individual origins, S and Y, and scale all of these like so. Now I do think it can be more flat, so control plus, control plus, S and Z, and let's make it pretty flat. Now I'm going to select these two areas, select, select similar area, then click on control minus, and then we should have all of these selected, S and Y, let's control plus, S and Z, and let's make it even flatter. This is good enough for what we are trying to do. First, we're going to add a texture. So I'm going right over here to the shader editor, click on new, and then I will bring in an image texture by pressing control T on the principal BSDF. You need to have Node Wrangler enabled for this. And I've brought in the same image that we used as a reference. Let's kill this on the Z, I think it's a bit too fat. Click on seven, let's go over here, Let's apply the mirror, by the way. You project from view. Go to the UV editor. Let's go to the viewport display and make sure that this fits on the entire model like this. Now let's go over here to the shader editor back again and let's bring down the roughness. I want it to be a bit more shiny and uh, that's basically it. Now I don't like how I don't like how flat it is on the sides. So I'm going to add a couple of loop cuts right here S and turn on proportional editing, select only the middle one, S and Y. And let's stretch it out like this. So I guess that's pretty good. Let's also select this part where we have some white. And then go back into the UV shader editor, bring it upwards just a little bit. So now we have the wrapper. I know this is a bit of a sketchy way to do it, but still it will work out. So just roll with it. Let's delete the reference. Now let's take this mesh. R and Y 90, RC 90, RC 180, RY 180. And then I will bring it over here so the ice cream fits right in there. S and Y, S and Z. Just make sure it fits in there like so. Now, we don't want to be filming from this area because it looks kind of bad. And of course, you try and fix that by scaling it up and uh, placing it on a different part of the, of the mesh, like right over here but uh, it will not look good either way. So we have to film from this side. So let's go over to the geometry nodes editor, click on new, and I'm going to add a mesh boolean. Then I will add a curve icosphere. Let's bring it over here. Let's give it a modifier, control three, displace, new. Click on this to go to the texture tab, click on clouds and uh, well, maybe something like this to give it some more randomization. And then we'll go back into this area and instead of the coordinates local, I will use global because if we do that, it will move when we scale it up, for example. 
or move it upwards. And now we can use this as a Boolean for this mesh. So let's select the icosphere, let's bring it in here, geometry into the mesh, and it should be relative. And if we turn off this icosphere right here, then you will be able to see that it's gone. Very good. Now, in order to keep working with this, let's go to the object properties tab, viewport display, display as wire, bounce box. So now we can easily select it as well. And now let's bring this up and on frame 72, I will press I and on frame zero, I will scale this all the way up. So something like this and bring it down as well until it is gone. But now if we turn it off and play this animation, what's supposed to happen is that our wrapper is being built like this. I think it's a bit too chaotic, to be honest. So I'm going into the modifiers and decrease the strength of this displacement by a lot. And that will make it a bit more smooth while still giving us enough randomization. So like this, it is going inwards and it's building our mesh. That looks very cool. Now you can do some other things with this, such as spawning a particle system on the edge of this, for example. I'm not going to do that for now. We'll just keep it very simple. Uh, I'm going to add a plane for the background. Let's add in a HDRI. I'm going to select the Sunset JHB Central, which I've been using for this entire mini course. And then I will slightly move it towards this side, perhaps have a camera from over here. Go to this tab, turn this around, 1080, 1920. So let's place a point light right over there, point light. Let's increase the strength of this by a lot. And this will give us a gradient for behind this animation. I will select the camera. I will go to the 70 second frame. Let's scale this inwards, press I, and go to frame zero. Let's move it outwards because I wanted to start with a zoom in. Then I will go to the graph editor right over here. And I'm going to keep this simple as well. Click on normalize because I want to see what I'm doing. Then I will do S and Y. Let's scale this like so, G and X. And this should make sure that our camera is coming in with a zoom. We can play around with this in order to make it look good, of course. And then the wrapper should start appearing going over this magnum. Now, if you want to make this animation a little bit more interesting because now it's simply going upwards, we can also give it some movement and there's a special technique for that. And I will show you this right now. It's actually from my very underrated lattice tutorial about how to animate lattices. So let's go shift A, let's add a lattice. I will scale this up to make sure that the entire object fits into this. And then I will go into the lattice properties right over here and increase the W to give it some more geometry. Let's do the same over there. Make sure we get some squares. Three, four, eh, something like this should do the trick. Then I will select our wrapper. I will select the lattice, control B, lattice deform. And now if we move this lattice, then the entire object should move along with it. Which also means that if we play around with this, then we can manipulate very specific parts of this mesh. But in this case, I'm going to keep it very simple. I will go to the modifiers, add a simple deform, set it to twist, and the twist should be on the Z axis. Then I will go to the very first frame. I will increase this angle to around 180. And you can see that this is twisting up our entire mesh. Let's click on I. Then go to the final frame and set this to zero. Click on I, select all of this, T, linear. So it is twisting into existence as well. And that's just the final little touch that you can add to this animation to make it slightly better. Very cool. So now we also have a cool twisting animation as it is being built up like so. I think this looks very cool. Now for the final part, I noticed that the animation is starting way too late. And that is due to our icosphere moving too slow. So I will select the icosphere. Let's take all of these keyframes. And on frame zero, I want it to be starting already. So something like this. And then it's immediately starting as the camera is coming in already. All right, so that's the way to make a wrapper animation using the mesh boolean and a lattice in order to make it a bit more special. And I think this looks very cool. I'm going to add some lighting to this to make it slightly better. 
So that's it for this animation. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a cool thing or two. In the next one, we are going to be creating the final animation for this Magnum Mini course. So I will see you there. Oh, and click on subscribe. Coco Choco, chocolate. Magnum Ice, it's chocolate. Choco Choco, chocolate. Bow. One more step.